All right, guys, in this video, I'll show you how I made this node setup. It basically adds more bells and whistles to the star node. So if I zoom in on this star, the logic on the left gives us the ability to make it a perfect star or not. And everything on the right is just so we can visualize it a little bit better. So to begin, I made this diagram and it's of some variables that we'll need to calculate to make our star perfect. The diagram is of a five-sided star, but the node setup we will create will work with any number of points. Angles A, B, and C and length X are needed to calculate the inner and outer radii. Once you work everything out, the final result will look like this. I'm not going to show how I derived this because that would make for a very long video. But if you're curious about that, it's on my Patreon. Now all we have to do is implement it and connect it to a switch in order for us to control whether it's a perfect star or not. I'm going to set it up so the outer radius is what drives everything, but you very well could rearrange this so the inner radius is what drives everything. As for implementation, let's start a new file. Create a new geometry tree by clicking on this geometry nodes tab and then clicking new. Now let's add a star node by pressing shift A, S, and then S again, and that should be the first result. We can place it right between this group input and output on the line. When you hover over it, it'll turn white, indicating that Blender will automatically make the connection. Now let's set it up so we can visualize it a little bit better. First, add in a fill and set it to ingons. Then add in a extrude mesh just after that. Set the off scale to 0.6. 0.618 and now add in a scale elements connect the top to selection and set the scale to zero then let's add in a merge by distance that just gets rid of some extra vertices that we no longer need and then finally add in a set material Set it to the default material. Then let's switch over to material preview so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna click material properties down here. Set the metallic all the way up and set the roughness pretty low. I'm gonna do 0.1. Now we can see what we're working with a little bit better. If you view this from the top and set the points to five and play around with the inner and outer radius, you'll see that there becomes a point where this becomes a perfect star. There's actually two points. If we bring it out further, that would also be a perfect star. On the group input, I'm going to create a variable. Uh, now I could create it by coming over here and add in a, a variable this way, but then we have to configure all this stuff. There's actually a quicker way to do this. So I'm going to remove that. And instead I'm going to drag from here over to here. And that just sets up some stuff automatically for us, like the energy type, the default min and max and all that. We just have to rename it. I'm going to rename it to point count like that. Now we're going to work through implementing the math as a node tree. When implementing complex math inside a blender, you have to work backwards, just as if you were typing it into a calculator. So don't start at outer radius, start at something you can calculate like pi and then divide it by point count and then take the sign of that and then go inside of each of these tangent functions and do the same, working your way out until you can add them together and then multiply them by a sign and then divide it by outer radius. And that's actually exactly how we're going to implement this. So let's begin by adding in a math node. Set it to divide. For the verse value, I'm just gonna type in pi like that and Blender will automatically use the value pi. For the second value, I'm gonna use the point count coming from the group input. And by the way, if any of the shortcuts I'm using aren't working, just go to edit, preferences, add on and search for node and just make sure node Wrangler is enabled. Now we need to take the sign of this, but instead of pressing shift A and then searching for it, I'm just going to select the one we're already using and hit shift D to duplicate it. And we're going to be doing that a lot and that's going to save us some time instead of having to search for it. Set it to sign and then connect it up just like that. That gives us our sign. If you look at what we're working towards, this sign gets multiplied by something, but we don't have that something yet. So let's work on that something right now. We'll come back to this later. Let's make a new math node by duplicating an existing one. Set it to subtract. The first value needs to be pi over two. So just type pi over two like that. 
We could do these with value nodes, but since they're constant, it's it's more nodes than it needs to be. So I'm not going to do that. And then the second value needs to come from this first node that we created. Now we need to take the tangent of this. So duplicate one of them. It doesn't matter which. Set it to tangent and then connect it like that. That gives us our first tangent. Now let's do the second tangent. The first thing we need is a two pi over the point count. We already have pi over the point count. So let's just duplicate a math node, set it to multiply. This is, and remember this is the pi over point count. And then I'm gonna multiply it by two. So that gives us, that gives us that. And then finally we need to take the tangent of that. So let's duplicate the tangent and connect it. That leaves us with sine and two tangent functions. We need to add the tangent functions together and then multiply it by the sine. So let's do that. Let's duplicate a math node, set it to add, connect them like that, then duplicate it again, set it to multiply, connect it up like that. And then finally, this is going to be our final math node. We need to set this one to divide. The denominator is going to be this multiply node and the numerator needs to be the outer radius, but the outer radius is an input to the star. So we can't just drag it over like this. It literally won't let us. So to fix that, what we need to do is connect it up to the group input and then connect it like that. All right. This is getting a little, a uh, little chaotic. So let's uh, fix this a bit. I'm just going to drag it over like that to tidy it up. Now, if we connect this output to the inner radius, it becomes a perfect star already. And we can play with the size of it. And you'll notice that even though we're adjust, we're only adjusting the outer radius, but the inner radius is being updated to match it. So it's always a perfect star, but maybe we don't want it to always be a perfect star. Maybe we want to make exotic stars. You know, I think that functionality would be good. So let's implement that by adding in a switch node. I'm not going to connect it to anything right now because I need to change this. So switch this over to float and then connect then connect the pink socket to an empty slot on the group input like that. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and rename it to perfect. All right. So if it's true, we're going to use the value we calculated, otherwise use its original value. So to do that, I'm going to connect this to true. Then I'm going to break the connection, go into inner radius by holding down control and then right click dragging to break that connection. And then just like before, I need this to come to false, but it's an input. So we need to drag it to an empty slot and then bring it over to faults. And then I need to break this connection. That was just to set it up so we don't have to change the default values. And then the output of our switch is going to go into inner radius. So now you can play around with it and you'll see that it works. We can adjust the inner and outer radius if we want to. And then if we want to make it perfect, we can just turn this on. This is going to make one of them not work because it's basing its value off of another value. But if you were to turn it off, then it would work. So you'll notice as I change the point count, it stays a perfect star. As we take this up to infinity, it just becomes a circle. But if we turn off perfect and change the point count, you'll see it behaves completely different. There's actually one problem with this setup, and that's if we look at it from the side, if you make the, the value very small, you'll see that we're not adjusting the height based on anything, right? So the height is coming from this extrude mesh node, and you'll see that it's constant. It's not being updated in response to anything else. And I'm actually going to leave this as a challenge. Think about what influences it and how. If you come up with a solution, leave it as a comment. I want to see what y'all come up with. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Have a good one and take care.